We're the United States of America, the country that has developed the most advanced technology in the world. Like from a laboratory in Texas, we can control the Mars rover that's 140 million miles away, we can drive it around Mars. But you're telling me we can't count votes in a timely fashion? Now, some of you are wondering whether it's worth it for the Trump campaign to launch legal battles in states like Pennsylvania, Michigan, Georgia, Nevada. After all, courts are generally uh, very reluctant to interfere in state vote counts, and then Democrat-run states always seem to be able to find new batches of votes to swamp any Republican advantage anyway. So what is it going to achieve? Won't lawsuits just delay the inevitable? Isn't it time to just move on, lick our wounds, and regroup? Well, that's exactly what the Democrats are hoping for, oh, in Mitt Romney, um, that we just move on and have the same process repeat itself every election. But my friends, that would be a huge disservice, not only to Trump supporters, but to our entire system of government. Mail-in ballots have been a concern from day one. I raised this issue with Vice President Pence months ago. Mail-in ballots, sir, are a looming disaster. I foresee a scenario where President Trump could actually be ahead in key states on election night, but those states couldn't have counted all the mail-in ballots. The one person, one vote right is at the very center of our democracy. And, and the president's made it very clear that we're gonna, not going to stand idly by while you see uh, uh, you know, Democrat states and Democrat governors use the backdrop of the coronavirus to send millions of, uh, of ballots all across their states and all across this country. But this universal mail-in voting where you're going to see literally ballots showered all across the state, yeah. uh, it, it, just, it's, it is ripe yeah. for fraud, and, and we are headed straight uh, to the courts to put a stop to it. And straight to the courts they went. Now, look, we've all heard the stories. Friends who received multiple ballot applications, uh, others receiving ballot applications from multiple states where they used to live, or applications for dead relatives. I know some of those, <laughs> those instances personally. But that was just the tip of the iceberg. And again, we all saw this coming. President Trump saw this coming. Here's some of what has already been reported. A Michigan state senator posted this video online purportedly showing a GOP poll observer being thrown out by election officials. Note the reaction from the poll workers. They're cheering. No, no concern there, right? Cheering every time we have someone escorted out of the room who's supposed to be watching what's going on. Likewise, Philadelphia city attorney and avowed anti-Trumper refused to comply with a court order presented to her by Trump's legal team. I don't understand what needs to be evaluated. As soon as we can. So someone will respond to you in writing or come down and talk to you? No, um, the order's pretty clear. I've been a lawyer for 30 years. Can you tell us what's unclear about it? The city is evaluating it, and I can't tell you anything more than that. I don't understand why eight attorneys need to evaluate this order. My clients representatives are to be within six feet of the process. We have read the order and we are complying with the order and we will discuss it with you in, in a bit. After we keep counting more votes in a road President Trump's advantage. Unbelievable. Now this comes as no surprise then that all over Philly GOP attorneys tasked with observing the polls reported being blocked from entering ballot counting sites. Why are they blocking them? What are they hiding? And out west, things are just as troubling. Two days ago, the attorney general there from Arizona found 18 unopened ballots hidden under a rock. Now, those ballots have since been returned, but it just shows you how vulnerable mail-in voting is to be uh, tampered with. If that doesn't convince you, check out what's happening in Nevada. Uh, the GOP believes that Clark County officials have counted thousands of mail-in ballots from dead people and people who no longer live there. The party has also fielded thousands of complaints from voters, including Jill Stokey, who claimed this happened to her. In years past, I always voted in person. This time, they mailed out the ballot and somebody took my ballot. 
They also took the ballot of my roommate. Guaranteeing the integrity of our vote is necessary for both parties. Vice President Biden says let every vote count. But that's foolish and would be illegal, as state laws require that certain parameters be met for voter eligibility. I couldn't go vote tonight if I wanted to. Should that vote count? In other words, we should ensure that every legal vote counts to be specific and correct. Every improper vote cancels out a legal vote on the other side. That must never be allowed to happen. We need to make certain that most Americans, at least most of them, believe elections are won or lost in this country fair and square. And the fact is, right now, almost all of us who voted for President Trump, around, what is it, 70 million Americans or so, we have real concerns about this mail-in voting and how this vote is being conducted. We don't trust the people counting the votes. I'm sorry. There's good reason not to trust them. And a lot of Americans don't trust the local officials overseeing the process. And they certainly don't trust the media reporting on it, my goodness, given what we've seen. This cannot be allowed to happen ever again. President Trump, he understands this. We're hearing stories that are horror stories, absolute horror stories. And we can't let that happen to the United States of America. It's not a question of who wins, Republican, Democrat, Joe, myself. We can't let that happen to our country. We can't be disgraced by having something like this happen. But it'll probably go through a process, a legal process. I have a feeling judges are going to have to rule. Unless something highly unusual happens, Americans should always know the winner of the election on election night or maybe the next morning. The country needs certainty, and our democratic process cannot be less reliable than, uh, say, Nigeria's. That's why the Trump campaign is fighting. But they're not just fighting for him. They're fighting for us. So that generations from now, this election isn't going to be remembered as just another sad example of elite corruption, but as a moment when we were diligent about getting to the truth. Democracy is sometimes messy. It sometimes requires a little patience as well. But that patience has been rewarded now for more than 240 years with a system of govern governance that's been the envy of the world. I ask everyone to stay calm, all the people to stay calm. Calm? Do we really think that if the positions were reversed, if Biden was seeing his lead evaporate hour by hour, that his supporters, given what they did this summer, would be calm? There's not enough plywood on the East Coast to protect Washington and Baltimore from the damage they do. So spare me, Mr. Vice President. Conservatives don't rush into the streets to fight. We're simply asking for an impartial review of what's happening. And frankly, that's our right. Frankly, it's our duty. When we have hundreds of thousands of ballots dumped in key states in batches after election night. President Trump received more votes than any Republican presidential candidate in history, and he attracted the highest turnout among non-white voters in 60 years. Now, he was able to do this not because he gave in and gave up when the going got tough, but because he knew how to fight for first principles. It's about time we had a Republican who knew how to fight. He stood up for working class Americans instead of selling them out to multinational interests. And now... It's our turn to stand up for him. Conservative and GOP leaders need to rally to his side. It's beginning to happen. I'm glad to see it. The American people need to make their voices heard as well. It's not just the future of one party that's at stake, but the future of our republic.